Hello everyone. Welcome to the course on Practical Machine Learning with Python. This module expands on the subject of concept learning by applying it to examples to obtain general and specific algorithms. By the end of this module, you will learn about general ordering, specific ordering, how to find a maximally specific hypothesis using the Finders algorithm. Added to these, you will also be learning about boundaries and version spaces as well as run through practical examples using the candidate elimination algorithm. Now, let's talk about general and specific ordering. Every concept learning task, as we have already seen, consists of a hypothesis space denoted by a capital H and a list of hypotheses H1, H2 and so on. A general value question mark is something like a placeholder which could accept any of the given possible values for the particular hypothesis whereas the phi operator denotes that the no value can be no value of the attribute can be accepted. A very specific hypothesis can be imagined to be like a set of strict conditions to be checked where the most specific ordering is denoted by a set of phi's basically indicating that no value in the hypothesis can satisfy the given concept learning criteria, leaving the concept a you shall not pass order. At the same time, a general order denoted by all question marks is an order that marks the most general hypothesis possibly satisfying the concept to be learned and allows any values learned from the hypothesis. So a quick review to what we've just covered. A set of phi's indicate a very specific ordering and are very restricted whereas a general order means that a given attribute can substitute any of its values to pass a given concept learning criteria. Let's consider an example for four days of whether Dave's friend enjoys water sports. Dave's friend loves water sports, but he only enjoys it on particular days and doesn't enjoy it on the rest. The concept task here is to find out the days on which Dave's friend enjoys water sports. Dave finds that his friend's love for water sports is dependent on a lot of factors and lists down the attributes as sky, air temperature, humidity, wind, water, and forecast on that specific day. Using this information, he collects the data for the four days and tabulates the days his friend enjoys water sports and on the days he doesn't. Dave clearly defined the attributes and lists out the possible values for each of the attributes. He says that the sky could be either sunny, rainy or cloudy and the air temperature be warm or cold. Similarly, he also tabulates the results for humidity wind, water, and the forecast that we obtain in the table given here. Dave defines a function called enjoy sport, which is a boolean function. It takes a day and its attributes as an input and outputs a yes or no based on the day when water sports are enjoyed. The aim here is to find out for all positive or true values of the function if there is a possible specification that could be set. One way to achieve this task is to use the finders algorithm, which is used to find the maximally specific hypothesis. This algorithm only considers the positive results of the enjoy sport function. Hence, among the four listed hypotheses H1, H2, H3 and H4, as shown in the previous table, only three hypotheses are used to obtain the result of this algorithm. In the finders algorithm, we first initialize a hypothesis H to be the most specific hypothesis represented by the same number of phi's as those of the number of attributes. Hence, in this example, we use six phi's listed as a tuple, one phi for each attribute. Then, for each positive training instance, that's where the concept satisfies, we find out if a given attribute can be replaced. If the specific hypothesis H already contains the same attribute value, we don't have to do anything. If it does not, we replace it by a more general constraint, a question mark. We need to repeat this until all the hypotheses are considered. The resulting hypothesis H will be the output hypothesis. Using the example defined before, we have H, the most specific hypothesis that we are trying to find defined. Then the first value, a tuple of sunny, warm, 
normal, strong, warm and sane becomes H1 since the attribute values are by definition more general than 5. H1 becomes your new hypothesis H after the first round. For the second hypothesis, we notice that the value of humidity in the hypothesis is high but the value in the specific hypothesis H is normal. Hence, we replace this attribute in the specific hypothesis H with a question mark forming the new updated hypothesis that you see. The next hypothesis H3 is a negative result and it isn't considered in the finder's algorithm. Thus, the resulting hypothesis H will still remain the same as that of H2. The positive hypothesis H4 contains two changes in the attributes of water and forecast with changes from warm to cool and same to change. Both of these attributes are changed to a question mark indicating generalization. At the end of the algorithm's run, we get the max specific hypothesis as a pupil of sunny, warm, question mark, strong, question mark and question mark. Which means that the reasons for Dave's friend to enjoy water sport is independent of the three attributes that are humidity, water and forecast which are replaced by question marks. This can also be verified from the table that Dave had tabulated before. The general boundary G with respect to a hypothesis space H and a training data D is a set of maximally general numbers members of H consistent with D. That is, it starts with the question marks. A specific boundary S with respect to the hypothesis space H and a training data D is a set of maximally specific members of H consistent with D. That is, it starts with phi's. A version space is the concepts that are well suited for all hypothesis values in H and lie between the general boundary G and the specific boundary S. The candidate elimination algorithm uses version spaces as discussed before and it uses the general and specific boundaries. In this algorithm we consider two hypotheses G and H indicating the most general hypothesis and the most specific hypothesis. These are a set of question marks and a set of phi's as we have seen before. For each training example in the given hypothesis, we do a separate set of operations depending on whether it's a positive hypothesis or a negative hypothesis. For a positive hypothesis as previously seen in the finder's algorithm, we perform the same operations and minimize the generalization making it more general than the previous hypothesis. For a negative hypothesis, we make the existing general hypothesis more specific, add a series of constraints that are not consistent with the data in the hypothesis. So consider this as a tree that is growing from both sides, top to bottom and bottom to top. The top to bottom growth indicates the specification tending towards generalization and the vice versa indicates a generalization tending towards specification. At one point of time, when all the hypotheses in the given hypothesis space have been run through, the algorithm, we are left with two trees that do not meet at the center but have grown significantly. The top and bottom boundaries obtained are called the specific boundary and the general boundary. We will see this in the example. Consider the same example we used before for the finders algorithm. This time we will be applying the candidate elimination algorithm that we have just learned. The first step is to define S0 and G0 which is the initialization of the specific and general hypothesis as shown. Then read the first hypothesis which is denoted by H. As you may notice, there is a plus in front of the hypothesis tuple indicating that the result of this positive hypothesis. Hence, accordingly to the, accordingly to the candidate elimination algorithm, we make it more general and the most specific value is generalized like in the finder's algorithm. And we find the value of S1 and G1. Here, G1 is equal to G0. For the second hypothesis, which is positive, we notice the humidity attribute has changed to normal, but the result is still true for the enjoy sport function. Hence, the specific hypothesis is further generalized and we obtain the values for S2 and G2. Since no changes are done to the general hypothesis, we have G0 equal to G1 equal to G2, where the hypothesis S2 contains a change from S1. 
we carry the result over to the next step of the algorithm. For the third hypothesis, we notice that it's a negative result and which means it can be made more specific. We find all the hypotheses which do not match and replace them with the individual pairs as available in the hypothesis being calculated by generalizing a more specific hypothesis. This results in three unique pupil pairs because rainy doesn't match sunny in the attribute of sky, similarly warm doesn't match cold in the air temperature, and change doesn't match same in the forecast attribute value. Therefore, each of these attribute values are listed as a possible set of values be becoming more specific and become the G3 and S3. S3 has no action done and remains the same as S2. From the three hypotheses that we have seen so far, the two boundaries are coming closer as follows. So the specification tree moves from the top to bottom whereas the generalization tree moves from the bottom to top. Reading the last hypothesis, which is a positive hypothesis, we need to make it more general and less specific. Therefore, we update the S boundary and replace the required attributes of water and forecast with the question marks, making them more general. This brings us to the S4, but you may notice that the G4 boundary loses the pupil with the attribute value of forecast from G3. This is because we have generalized the forecast attribute in S4 Therefore, for a generalized content that is a specific boundary cannot exist. There cannot be a rule which says that there is a possibility for having the value of forecast as change instead of same to affect the result of the value of enjoy sport. We can clearly say that the value of enjoy sport is independent of the forecast values, hence it cannot be a part of the general constraints either. The final two boundaries look like G4 and S4. There are different combinations that could be generated using the pupils present in G4 to achieve S4. The space between these two boundaries G4 and S4 is the version space and contains the list of general hypotheses which will result in the true value for enjoy sport concept that Dave wanted to find out. This marks the termination of the candidate elimination algorithm. Thank you.